All right. Well, welcome to episode two of our new podcast here from the Avenue Church called Good News for Those Who Struggle. We are glad that uh, you are joining us. Yes, mad applause. Thanks to uh, our producer, uh, Frankie. And uh, my name is Casey. I get to host the show, serve as one of the pastors at the Avenue Church. And uh, it is uh, just a great joy to be here and to be able to uh, have a space for us uh, to look at uh, what we've committed to look at for uh, a total of seven weeks, and this being week number two, uh, and just how God meets us really in our in our um, struggle with mental health. And um, man, we are so uh, excited to have our guest with us uh, today. His name is John O'Brien. Uh, John and I go back to Spanish River Church days. Uh, John is actually the uh, co-founding pastor with me of the Avenue Church. And so uh, he has such a dear place in my heart and in the heart of our church family. And I'd love for him to share a little bit about who he is and what God's been doing in his life. Hey, guys. Excited to be here with you. Thanks for having me, Casey. So, care, good news for those who struggle. I identify with that statement so, so much. So, let me go back to when I was 16 years old and I latched on to a phrase that really helped me. It was, there's no progress without struggle. And that helped me reframe as a 16 year old with very little insight that. When I was struggling, it did not necessarily mean everything was bad. It's good. It could actually mean that things were getting better. Mm. And uh, as I learned to walk with the Lord, I, was, I, I learned that phrase in a treatment center mm. uh, that I was at for basically 16 and a half months, oh. where I was finding recovery from drugs and alcohol, mm-hmm. severe fear of man mm. issues. Mm. Um, I had been in 12 programs before that I was pretty much had a bad reputation that exceeded my own school and Mm. went into regions further than, you know, where I lived, uh, had been in trouble for being drunk in school, intoxicated in school twice, Mm. ninth grade, 11 shots of Evan Williams before school and 10th grade, uh, two half pints of vodka after gym class so those will do it to you if you guys are keeping track that, uh, yeah that, uh, um, if you weigh like 150 pounds <laughs> yeah. um so that's where god has brought me from mm. from the struggle mm. of addiction and identity issues shame a shame-based identity there's a lot of shame that goes mm-hmm. with addiction mm-hmm. and walking out of that and then even now um god is helping me to reframe my experience of struggle mm as I learn to keep my eyes on him and listen to what he says is true about me, about the world, about uh, the hope that we all have, rather than what I think Mm -hmm. or feel Mm -hmm. or what the world thinks and feels. Mm -hmm. Man, I can remember um, early in in our church, um, if you're wondering why the culture is what it is at the Avenue Church, um, I'm sitting with the person that set much of that culture Obviously, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that, but he uses people to do that. And um, if you're wondering why it's a safe place to struggle uh, and why we would have a podcast called Good News for Those Who Struggle 10 Years Later, um, you're here. And so I love that. Um, And I feel like uh, I just have a sense that you gave me um, permission to struggle out loud and championed and valued that. And that, uh, in turn, has done that for so many other people. Um, and so I want to say thank you uh, for that, because I feel like it's changed my family, it's changed our church, and I feel like it's, it's changing the church overall, and, uh, and Jesus is honored in that. So thank you. Um, so tell us, just, just get us a little bit current from your 16, life's a mess, it's owning you, to... Um, it doesn't look like that anymore. I know you still struggle. I know there's still there's still work to be done, but um, give us a little bit about like kind of what God's been doing in your life lately. Sure. So, um, mental health. What what does that mean? Um, I just thought about it for a second, and I think it would have to mean thinking, feeling, and acting like Jesus in every situation of life, 
on a consistent basis. Mm. So based on that definition, I am not very mentally healthy. <laughs> right. I don't know if anybody else uh, is yeah. with Can we me get here. some applause on that one? There, there, so, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so we're relating. Based on that definition, I have a long way to go okay. when it comes to mental health. Um, and then just to give a little more uh, detail mm -hmm. about what that looks like for me, um, Jesus has brought me from some very crippling mental health seasons where mm -hmm. I would have taken my own life. Mm -hmm. And that was even after being a pastor for seven years mm -hmm. and then transitioning into the business world and finding my path. Right. Um, it was much, much harder than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And there was even an eight month period where I didn't know what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. I was driving mm -hmm. Uber and Lyft at night. Right. My wife was a nurse. She was working during the day. I'd take care of the kids during mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I work at night mm. and, um, Lord, who, who am I? Why am I here? What are you doing? Um, so there were some really hard times, but in the course of following the path that's in front of me and all the world events going on right now, mm -hmm. um, I've definitely found my, myself in some places where it was really, really dark mm. and, um, I definitely couldn't get out of it on my on my own and so that looked like extreme anxiety mm -hmm. um, paralyzing mm -hmm. anxiety um, obsessive thoughts um, that were really negative mm -hmm. uh, you know and um, my self-talk is so negative that it, I was so negative that if I were to repeat it here mm. um, you guys might lock me up mm. so but um, the good news is is that in spite of those things uh, I'm growing mm. on a consistent basis. Um, I have some some relationships that have uh, got Jesus has used to keep me going, mm. and that have been a, a source of stability mm -hmm. as I've struggled. Mm -hmm. And I have a ton of hope mm. that it's only going to get better mm. every day. Mm. Love that. Love that. You mentioned your family. Can you give a quick shout out to your family, please, so we know kind of. Absolutely. Hey, babe. Uh, I'm married to my beautiful wife, Joy, uh, for 10 years now, mm. which uh, makes her the greatest saint in history. Come on, let's, can, we get some, can we get some love for that? There it is. Yeah. And uh, we have two beautiful kids together, uh, Caleb, who's four, and Dylan, who's now about 12 months, or close to, yeah, he's about to have his first birthday. Wow. So, you know, break out the smash cake. That, that's it's awesome. coming up in a that's week or That's awesome. Two. I love that. I love that. So, um, you know, we, we take it from 16 to now where you are, you, you, you know, you're pursuing career, um, been married for, you know, 10 years, you got two kids. Uh, and so the Lord has taken, taken you, um, to a, a really beautiful place, but is continuing uh, to take you. And so, so there's, there's still, there's still a lot of road ahead. And, and, even even what you said, so praise God for where you are right now. I mean, let's not miss that, right? I mean, from, from what you were sharing, from where you were to where you are, only God, right? Um, and yet, there's still, you're not a stranger to darkness. It's, it's not like, oh, well, that was when I was 16. The, the dark um, seasons, if you will, can still be a part of your present reality. And, and uh, you were talking about really kind of having to, to have rescue through them. You mentioned community, you, meant, you know, presence of God uh, is, is certainly uh, one of those things. Um, so in, in the message, John Hicks uh, from this past Sunday talked about how David was somebody who loved God but, but still had struggle. And I have a feeling that, that hopefully many of our listeners will know that, um, that it, it is it is okay and right and, and even proper to, to really love Jesus and yet still have struggles. Talk to me a little bit, uh, talk to us a little bit about this, um, the idea that um, the gospel, it uh, forgives us of sins. That's good news that we're forgiven. And, and it also invites us into freedom. But there's times when we're, when we're living uh, forgiven of sin, but but we still are not experiencing the fullness of freedom that God has for us in this moment. Can you talk to us a little bit about that tension? Sure. Um, I've definitely had to learn this the hard way. And uh, you can learn it and then realize that if you don't maintain it, you'll mm. lose it. So um, 
the forgiveness of Jesus. So if we think about freedom in Jesus, like he said he came to set the captives free, Mm -hmm. it's pretty liberating to learn that you've been forgiven. Mm -hmm. Past, present, future sins, Mm -hmm. completely Mm -hmm. cleansed, no Mm -hmm. shame. Uh, You're loved. You're a new child of God, Mm -hmm. son or daughter. Mm -hmm. Delighted in, not a future version of you, Mm -hmm. but you now struggling in a hot mess. Um, that's beautiful news. Yeah. And so even hearing that, I'm like, come on, keep going, bro. So that's our position in Jesus. Um, fully known, fully loved. And, uh, the church, uh, you know, reformers called it similis de sed peccator. So Latin for simultaneously sinful and wicked Mm -hmm. yet Mm -hmm. loved and treasured Mm -hmm. in Christ. So we are, in Jesus, mm-hmm. and that makes us completely new. Mm-hmm. We have a new identity and a new potential, but though positionally mm-hmm. we're completely forgiven and righteous, in practice we're still a hot mess. Okay. So what's how does that gap get bridged? And mm-hmm. that's where we learn something that Dallas Willard said, that grace is opposed to earning. Mm-hmm. It's not opposed to effort. Right. Right. So if we want to become in practice who we are in position, mm-hmm that's where we have to learn to embrace a new kind of struggle. Mm. Uh, one that is a process it's lifelong, Mm. it's arduous, it's grueling, and it's going to require all that we have. So our salvation is completely God. Mm -hmm. It's a Mm -hmm. gift. We Mm -hmm. don't do anything to earn it. And even in our sanctification, our growth in grace, becoming more like Jesus, thinking, feeling, acting like him consistently in every situation of life, that part requires all of God Mm -hmm. and all of us. So it's like a plane. Mm. You need both wings. Mm -hmm. So all of us and all of him. Mm. And so working out our salvation with fear and trembling because it is God who works in us to will Mm -hmm. and to do. So salvation is a gift. We don't do anything for that. Mm -hmm. And that's comprehensive. Mm -hmm. But growth in grace is a grind. Mm. And uh, only the joy of our salvation and Mm -hmm. learning to abide in the love of Jesus is what can give us the right attitude to approach that correctly. Listen, man, when you say growth is a grind, that's actually not bad news for me. That's liberating and freeing to hear that. You know, I'm I'm like, yes, because you're affirming my reality. And I think sometimes I, I, uh, like, my, this is my reality, and I would imagine it might be uh, some of those listening we, we feel like we're doing something wrong or we're missing it when it's a grind. And um, just to, to have a, a, a different expectation, uh, hearing, hearing that from you is, again, part of why the avenue is the avenue, is that, no, like, th- this is, there's no, uh, I think, I forget how you started the show, but, like, there, there's no progress without pain, you know? And, and um, just the idea that uh, this is this is the normal part of what it means to grow up it is very affirming and even empowering. Like I feel, I, I can almost feel courageous now to to suffer well as opposed to shameful. Um, could you could you talk to us a little bit about um, what are some practices? What what are some things that we can maybe get our hands around when we find ourselves in those moments of you know you know we're talking about mental health and and just the struggle of that and and what it means to like you know work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Help me as if we're if we're going to use the term like freedom fighter. You know we want to fight for the freedom of others, but but I but I feel like we're also called to fight for our own freedom. You know. And so what does it look like to, to, to have some practices that are helpful um, as, as we progress uh, through, through the Christian life? Sure. So um, I'll just use my own experience based on Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, and uh, hopefully it, it blesses somebody. So if we, we can be, Jesus is going to tell us in this passage, we can be successful freedom fighters. Mm. He promises it. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good news. Okay. That's that's affirming and exciting. It's a good start. In Christ, we can do this. This is our birthright. Okay. So we can be successful freedom fighters mm-hmm. if we embrace discipleship to Jesus. So what is the pattern that Jesus gives us in this verse for freedom? Mm-hmm. And we'll see it. So I'm going to read it, and then I'll just go through three quick things. Love it. And you can dialogue. Mm-hmm. 
Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so what are some practices of a freedom fighter? The first one is coming to Jesus. This is where it starts. Jesus is our North Star. Mm. And so who is Jesus? He's Emmanuel, God with us. Our salvation is a gift. We don't go to him. He comes to us. We're not looking for him. He's on a rescue mission for us. And that rescue mission is ongoing until we're safe in glory. Mm. So there's not one inch of our heart that willingly loves God that Jesus didn't have to fight for. Mm. And Mm. I I didn't come up with that. John Owen did. Mm. Um, And so Jesus comes to us, and then he invites us to respond to his love that will not stop pursuing us. Mm. Come to me. Mm. So it starts with coming to him. We can know all the right stuff and have a lot of insight, but if we don't come to Jesus, the freedom pattern never begins. Mm. So come to me. And why is he inviting us to come to him? Because of his beautiful, compassionate heart. He says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Anybody weary today? Mm. Anybody feel oppressed and plagued and weighed down with burdens? Jesus invites you to come. Mm. I feel that way all the time. Mm -hmm. And why do we feel so burdened? Well, the world is definitely hard. Mm -hmm. The world's crazy right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. And this is not new. Crazy has been the norm (laughs) for hundreds of thousands of years. But we're also restless. We're also weary because of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Augustine said, um, restlessness, all restlessness is a homesickness for God. Our -hmm. hearts are restless till they rest in God. Mm. And so we're invited to come and rest because our hearts will never find what they're looking for outside of jesus he Mm. is the creator he is the redeemer he is emmanuel god with us so just slow down and right now wherever you are as you're listening come to jesus Mm. there's nothing blocking you Mm. and i will give you rest that's his promise and so in every freedom step every freedom fight coming to jesus and resting in jesus is the first Mm step and it's everything is shaped by that (laughs) so the next part of a of a successful fighting and freedom of freedom practices is take my yoke upon you so if coming to jesus is the source of freedom Mm -hmm. he's the only source delighting in his beauty experiencing his love beholding his majesty and glory all over the bible all over history all over the world and every sunrise and sunset and cool breeze and cool drink and great mm. food and enjoying your family and everything, Jesus is the author, the source. Mm. And when you come to him, you come to God. But not only is he the source of freedom, we have to accept the cost of freedom. Take my yoke upon you. Mm. And so this is aligning your life with reality, with love, with a culture of people who know and love one another, both the Trinity and all of heaven um, that's on their feet watching us be the church militant and Mm -hmm. fight this good fight of faith that we have in front of us, Mm -hmm. that you have in front of you, Mm -hmm. dear friend listening to this. Mm -hmm. So accept the cost of freedom. And what is that cost? It's discipleship to Jesus. What is a yoke? Think about two oxen pulling whatever that thing is, the yoke that digs the holes so that you can plant seeds and have a crop. There's, It's on the shoulders, Mm -hmm. but Jesus says, hey, yeah, you're next to me, but it's my yoke. Mm. I've already done it perfectly. It's finished. Mm. So then what's our part? To follow in his footsteps Mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. He's with us to the end of the age. So whatever we're facing right now that seems so insurmountable and impossible and too hard, if God's allowed it to be in your life, we can walk with him through it. Mm. It's good. Whether that's losing a loved one to cancer, Mm. 
we can rage against the the dying of the light and hate that and plead for God to heal. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't, we can learn how to lament Mm. and experience healing and God's presence, even in our grief Mm -hmm. and even in our trial, take my yoke upon you. We can't carry this yoke. We cannot fight this battle in our own strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you Mm. and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart. All of eternity will be enjoying the gentleness mm. of God, mm. like the perfect father, the perfect mother, with increasing experience and knowledge and expectation and joy for all of eternity. And you can start experiencing that now, mm. in the midst of your overwhelming fear, in the midst of your in the midst of your overwhelming sorrow, mm-hmm. sadness, depression, mm-hmm. shame, guilt remorse whatever it is that's overwhelming you right now you can experience rest in jesus as you learn to accept this hardship as the pathway to peace Hmm. and you will find rest for your souls so there's the source of freedom come to me jesus says all Mm -hmm. who labor and are heavy laden there's the cost of freedom which is discipleship aligning your life with jesus what in your life are you where are you resisting mm. his will for your life? Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. three good places to look for that real briefly. One yes. is your relationships. Mm. Take your worst relationships where you're harboring resentment. You're like, forget that person. I've mm-hmm. written them off. They're done forever. I'm not forgiving them. That's a, that's a, a Jesus discipleship issue mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where you got to go to the body and go to the Lord and wrestle Mm. to deal with that Mm -hmm. because jesus says if you don't forgive them the way you forgive me and actually want good for them you're being disobedient right and that sounds really terrible to hear Mm. but it's not because they deserve it it's because jesus deserves it right right you want to jump in no i was i was letting you finish up your those three ideas and yeah i've got some questions okay so real quick let me land the plane relationships and then the next one is emotions Mm mm-hmm God gave you your emotions to show you where your heart is, Mm -hmm. what you're treasuring that Mm -hmm. could be rivaling or supplanting Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so Tim Keller said, if we take our uncontrollable emotions, anxiety, anger, and depression, if we pull them up by the roots, if we do self-examination, if we ask questions, why am I so uncontrollably afraid? Why am I so uncontrollably Mm -hmm. angry? Mm -hmm. Why am I so uncontrollably depressed and despairing? Mm-hmm. You'll find your idols clinging to them. Mm. So whenever we're sinning because we're out of control, angry, sad, or depressed, wanting escape mm-hmm. through addiction, porn, whatever, um, fornication, something is ruling your heart instead mm-hmm. of Jesus. Mm-hmm. A love for something mm-hmm. in creation is your salvation and it's going to disappoint you Mm -hmm. and he loves you too much to let you settle yeah so relationships are one diagnostic your emotions are another Mm -hmm. diagnostic and Mm -hmm. then the last one is where are you resisting surrender Mm -hmm. wherever in your life you're resisting and you're saying you can have three eighths of this pie or three fourths of this pie but you can't have this not not yet Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's another idol in your life And it's because you really believe it can give you something only God can give you. And that's why you need the church. Mm. There's another practice here. We can't, accountability is not for what you can do on your own. It's for what you can't do on your own. And so the church is not a club. It's a CrossFit. Mm. It's a, it's a discipline. It's a rhythm. It's a routine in your life Mm. that Jesus uses. Uh, John Bunyan in his book, that he wrote in jail over 12 years called the pilgrim's progress second most read book in history second to the bible talked about on his arduous journey right after he goes past lions that couldn't eat him mm-hmm. they were on a, a chain going into the paradise uh something paradise i forget and it was the church mm. it was a picture of the church is that on this arduous pilgrimage this long journey this fight that's so filled with uh failures and fears Mm -hmm. you have the church which is Mm -hmm. this recurring place where you find 
God, you encounter him, you enjoy him in fellowship with others, and you mm-hmm. get accountability. The grace in each of us sharpens us, one another, mm. to grow. And so we need accountability. Do you have accountability in your life? And if you don't, why not? Right. The Bible says if you isolate, he who isolates seeks his own desire. Mm. They will break out against all sound judgment. So if you don't have accountability in your life, some kind of calamity is coming right. of right. your own invention. Sure, sure. John, that's so good. And I just I love you getting to expound in, in that uh, particular uh, section of scripture and just the practicality of that. And so hopefully as you guys are listening, you guys um, were, were cued into, uh, I think some really both um, theological truth, but also some, some practical handles uh, for this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comb through that a little bit. Okay. And, and so thank you for giving us that foundation. The first thing you said is um, come to me. The freedom pattern never begins without this start. Um, what, is, what does it look like to come to Jesus? I'm not talking about the 15-year-old who responds to a, a prayer at, you know, in, in, a, in a cool moment. I'm not delegitimizing that. I'm talking about the 46-year-old who finds himself caught in an anxiety loop again. How, what, what does it look like to be in the midst of maybe a mental health battle and come to Jesus? The Psalms give us the pattern for this. Mm. They're so encouraging. Mm-hmm. I live in the Psalms, mm-hmm. especially when I'm really, really, really struggling. I'm with you, bro. Because you. it's like, um, Tim Keller calls it like climbing a rock, uh, like a mountain mm-hmm. where you need each finger in a crevice and mm. you can't move without making sure you've got three of them hooked. Mm-hmm. You're clinging right. to this rock. Right. Um, and so that's us when we're really suffering. And so what does it sound like? It sounds like David or any of the psalmists where one second they're like, Oh God, you're so beautiful. Mm. Where are you mm. in the very next second? Mm-hmm. And so that back and forth. And so for me, it sounds like Lord, and this happens hourly. I am so afraid. I am so in over my head. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this. It feels like I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This Mm -hmm. is overwhelming. And there's a lot riding on this. My (laughs) family's counting on me. I have to provide. You have to, I can't do this on my own. Mm -hmm. And then faith and feeling. Okay. Bringing God's promises into that. Mm. And what does God say? He says, And this is where the the last part of the freedom fight. Mm -hmm. There's the source of freedom, the cost of freedom, and then there's the scorecard for freedom. Okay. And so how do I evaluate myself? Because in that moment, I can beat myself up and be like, what a loser. (laughs) You're (laughs) such a loser. Right. Which is a whole nother battle. Yeah. You've got the real battle and you've got your fist hitting you in your face. Yes. And it's 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 just a loop that just crushes us. And so actually, I I took a psychological test that said that I have like... four crippling lies that I believe Mm. and I believe them at the extreme Mm. like I'm at the highest level right and one of them was unrelenting standards Mm. so I'm such a loser if I was who I should be I wouldn't be thinking this I wouldn't be feeling Mm. this I wouldn't be in this cycle this loop right but that's a lie right and so um what does it sound like the scorecard yes the beatitudes because we are Mm the salt and light of the world. Mm -hmm. So salt retards decay. The world is decaying. It's like a piece of meat that if like you put it on the table, great. Two days later, that's it. It's decaying. Right. Entropy is set in. We're salt that Mm -hmm. is retarding that decay. Mm -hmm. We're also here to bring out the flavor, the Mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Um, We're also the light of the world. The world is dark. We're here to dispel the darkness and Mm -hmm. to attract attention to God. So how do we do that? through the Beatitudes, happy Mm -hmm. are the poor in spirit. So when I'm really struggling and I'm overwhelmed and Mm -hmm. I'm freaking out, what does God say is health in this journey? Yeah. Happy. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. That's what I don't have. Mm -hmm. Happy are those who are poor in spirit. My biggest problem in that moment is that I'm middle class in spirit. Mm. I'm (laughs) beating myself up. That's so good. For feeling overwhelmed when God is like the entrance is free because I paid it all. It's my mm-hmm. yoke. Mm-hmm. Come desperate. Mm. 
There's nothing wrong with being desperate. You can right. be your happiest when you are most desperate. Right, right. That's counterintuitive, guys. Yeah. Yeah. But it, the king of the universe has said it. This is his path, and he's with you, Emmanuel, right now. Right. So happy are you when you admit that you're overwhelmed. That's good news. That's good news. And so then you just go to the next beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yes, Lord, but I'm not just overwhelmed and desperate, but I'm also a sinner. Mm -hmm. I don't think or feel or Mm -hmm. act the way I should, and I don't do it on a consistent basis. Right. I'm like bipolar with my obedience, yeah, like yeah. up and down, yeah. up and down, up and down. Sloppy faith. Sloppy yeah, trust. sloppy faith. I love that. <laughs> sloppy trust. And he's like, I'm here to comfort you because I've already carried the yoke right. perfectly. Right. You're mine. Mm. I'm yours. Mm. I'm with you. And so then you would think if you're like me, then you're like, all right, well, now I had my faith boost. Now it's time to go out there and charge and take over the world. Right. But what's the next one? What's the next scorecard? Blessed are the meek, Mm. the gentle. That's not me trying to pump myself up Mm -hmm. to go take over the world. Mm -hmm. That's me resting because my father is with me Mm. and Jesus is directing me. And I just need to yield to what he's doing in my life and be available to love and serve others sacrificially the way Jesus loves me. Wow. By entering their world, by nurturing their joy. Mm. So it's a gentle posture mm. where instead of me trying to be bipolar and mm-hmm. I'm going to mm-hmm. do everything, I'm mm-hmm. going to kick my list butt. Right, 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 know? right. It's, no, I can't do this. And so then you can keep going uh, through the Beatitudes. But that's the scorecard, guys. If you want to be the salt and light of the world, it's going to come from a place of learning to come to Jesus, to rest in Jesus, and to yield all of your life, all of that overwhelming crazy in front of you. Mm-hmm. It's too big for me, Jesus, Mm -hmm. but it's not too big for you. I love that scorecard and the idea of um, just uh, you referenced the Beatitudes. Where do we find the Beatitudes? Matthew 5 through 7. Okay, so um, if you're listening here and and you just, um, like myself, resonated with that scorecard, which is so different than the scorecards that we generally produce or that other people produce for us, uh, that's good news for those who struggle. That's a scorecard that you should spend some time in. And so, um, you know, between this week and next, that, that would be that would be some good reading and, and meditating on that. Um, because what you're doing for us, John, is you're 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 helping us to to see a Jesus um, that looks at our struggles differently. I think than many of us are conditioned to, or or even think the church would. And um, and and those again are those are those to me are courage, um, those are cur- like courageous invites. Uh, I get to be fully known and fully loved in that. And um, uh, y- you talked uh, a little bit about come to me. That was, that was awesome. Um, and uh, so, so secondly, uh, take my yoke upon you. Uh, so so we're, now we're coming to Jesus, but then there might be some changes that are ahead of us in this progress. So it's not just um, coming to Jesus um, and expecting a, the struggle to be gone or life to go back to normal, quote unquote, um, there may be some real work that needs to be done in our life. And you referenced idols. And so when we find ourselves um, being controlled by either fear or anger or, you know, um, I- anything that has like a controlling nature on us, there's probably, you know, as Keller talks about an idol clinging to that. Uh, are there, are there any helpful tools, um, that uh, have have you you've seen to um, help in identifying some of those idols and and you know like okay so how do I know is is this an is this like an idol or is this just kind of a, a like a struggle like a you know a biological thing that's happening to me like h- how do I know that I'm in idol I'm I'm in idolatry and uh, and then what do I do when I know I'm there? Great question. So the, you could Google the four G's, um, and, uh, they, um, do four G's Tim Chester and then look at how people mm. expand and enlarge and mm-hmm. unpack mm-hmm. that. Um, cause if you type in four G's, uh, this other guy will come up too, but he's a gospel baller as well. Okay. So, um, but start there because it will talk about these 
different things that compete with Jesus for the center of mm. our heart. I live on the four G's. So that and you're, then, brother, you're, you're speaking my language right now. Go ahead. Keep awesome. going. Awesome. So comfort, control, approval, mm-hmm. and what was the other one? Approval. Power. Yeah, power. Okay. Power. Mm-hmm. So power is winning. Uh, so we'll start with approval. I only have meaning if... Uh, people approve of me. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're following Jesus obediently, (laughs) you're on a collision course with the culture Mm -hmm. and with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, And so uh, that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. But that's where God's going to grow you. Mm -hmm. Because as you learn to trust what he says over what you feel Mm -hmm. and what others feel, you will learn to see that he's enough. Let me just stop you right there. So what you're saying is that some of my mental health issues is going to be a result of like my unbelief or like a sinful heart that wants something besides Jesus. Okay, keep going. The whole journey, that will Mm. be a a battle Mm. because our sinful nature is opposed to what God wants for you. All the time, right? It's not like we get, not like we get better sinful natures, right? Yes. Uh, uh, Paul said, I find it to be a law, like Mm. gravity, Mm. something that's inevitable, unavoidable, always there, Mm. that whenever I want to do good, which his new heart wants to do every second, evil is right there with me. And the Bible defines evil in Jeremiah 2 as forsaking the fountain of living waters Mm. for your satisfaction, your identity, your security, your significance, your life, and digging broken wells that can't hold water, that muddy the water, that Mm -hmm. pollute it, Mm -hmm. and trying to essentially drink toilet water. So we exchange the truth of God for a lie, and we worship and serve creatures, creations instead. And then the result is mental unhealth. Mental unhealth and slavery. And And I'm not not saying that's the only cause. We we honor biology, trauma, all those sort of things, but but what I hear you saying is we can certainly add negativity, in negative ways, to our mental health through through these sinful patterns. Yes, and the gospel, you have to look at yourself through the gospel because Jesus said it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but mm. the sick. Mm. So the world, with the world, back to approval and now winning in power, um, it's appearance isn't everything, it's the only thing. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the people that look the most successful, they look impeccable on the outside, are the most enslaved. Mm-hmm. Because if you can't rest, you're a slave. Mm -hmm. Jesus said Mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, God saved his people. He said, one day a week, rest. And why was that a declaration of freedom? Because if you can't rest, you're a slave. Mm -hmm. And look at a lot of people who look very successful. They they couldn't rest if you paid them to. Right. And that's our natural state, restlessness. So I just want to encourage you that when God exposes your sin, it's not to crush you. Mm. It's not to humiliate you. Mm -hmm. It's not to reject you. It's to say, this is how much I love you. Mm -hmm. It's more electrifying. And Jesus gave us that image in Luke 7 where he said that two people owe money. One owes 10,000, the other owes like 100 grand. Mm -hmm. Neither can pay. And then that day you'd be sold into indentured servitude and Mm -hmm. your whole family would go into slavery and you might be separated. So which one is more rejoicing when they're forgiven Mm -hmm. that debt? The one who has the greater debt. So if you are like, whoa, I'm such a sinner. God could never love me. No, he's saying, I want to free you so that you can go out there and be a beacon Mm. for my unfathomable love. Mm. So um, as as we as we're talking through here, that you know we've got this uh, the four G's and and uh, helping us to identify idols and and so uh, you know just just briefly what that means is uh, God is great therefore I don't need to be in control that's that's usually G number one so if you've got control you've got things that are like anger or anxieties or, or if you have um, if lack of control is producing mental unhealth in you. Uh, you've got a gospel issue, right? Uh, Number two is God is good, therefore I don't need to look elsewhere. So that's that's the comfort, sort of like if I'm looking outside of Jesus to find my ultimate comfort, um, I've got an an issue. And and again, that's going to result in some unstable mental health because you're not not drinking from the well that God created you to drink. God is um, glorious, therefore I don't need to fear others. 
right? Fear of, fear of man is going to drive us into some unhealthy places, and the gospel, um, the gospel has an answer for that. And then finally, God is gracious, therefore I don't need to prove myself to myself, to God, or to others. And so Ch- Chester walks us through that. And I think those are, you know, if you're listening out there and you're, you're like, man, idols, how do I identify that? That's a, I think that's a really good place to start. If you've, if you've got some control things or if you're finding your comfort, uh, you know, outside of Jesus or if you're just really consumed with approval of others and he, obviously that's doing havoc to your mental health or, or if you just find yourself unable to rest, you're always proving of course, the result is going to be a mental health that's that's a mess, and and so what we learned today is, hey, in the midst of that, don't pretend like that's not happening. Just come to Jesus with that, and then be willing to take His yoke upon you, right? And be willing to um, surrender those areas uh, in in just honesty and vulnerability, both to Him and, and also in community, which is which is, and then finally, learn from me. So there's going to be there's going to be like a process to this. So it's not like a one-time thing, right, John? Like it, it wasn't like on Monday you, you know, surrendered your need for control and now you've been fine ever since. The, we'll close up with this. Talk to us a little bit about the journey and what is, what is persistence in, in fighting for freedom uh, look like for the Christian? Hmm. So when any of us are motivating ourselves to, to charge and do something that seems too difficult, um, what do we do? We we think about something that really is great mm-hmm. to us, mm-hmm. that motivates us. And a lot of times we listen to music. Mm-hmm. And so both of these are poker principles. Um, when you stick a metal pole into a fire and it burns red, mm-hmm. find those things and people in your life that God uses to... Mm-hmm elevate your soul to recharge your battery to make you run after him Mm -hmm. and uh and meditate on those so Mm -hmm. the key is the key to all of them is learning how to meditate to chew on god's word so in the world meditation is emptying your mind in the bible it's filling Mm -hmm. your mind Mm -hmm. with god's word Mm -hmm. and as you learn to meditate on god's word to delight in god's word and God's word is a, is a person. Mm. The whole scripture points to a, a living person. Mm-hmm. And as you learn to meditate on him and abide in him and his love, you will find yourself uh, on this journey and you will find rest even in your struggle. Because mm. Hebrews says that uh, he learned obedience through what he suffered and we suffering is inevitable. Mm. And ironically, it supercharges our growth so that we can mm. walk the journey better. And so learning to accept the struggle mm. is indispensable to growing mm. and advancing faster. And so none of us want to do that. Mm. I don't want to do that, mm-hmm. but that's why we need the church. We need that CrossFit church dynamic to mm. encourage each other. Hey, take another step. Yeah. So good. So good. It's good to hear that um, the journey is, it's not quick, it's not easy, and it's not done alone, right? And, um, and so, uh, you know, hopefully today uh, you guys uh, were able to get some, not only, uh, I think, just rich theology about suffering and the fact that um, suffering belonged to Jesus, and so it's going to belong to us, and it's actually something he uses you know, to really transform us, um, but also practical tools, uh, what to do when I find myself in the midst, especially as we talk about mental health, uh, a mental health struggle and inviting Jesus in, being willing to learn uh, from Jesus and, and make changes and then committing to the process. Um, and man, I just loved the scorecard, changing the scorecard from like the absence of struggle to uh, what Jesus uh talks about in the Beatitudes. Man, I think that's a great place to finish up, and I'm uh, super uh, thankful that John was able to join us today. Can we show him some love? I mean, there it is right there. He did a great job of taking us through uh, some really important stuff. And so hopefully you guys uh, were encouraged and uh, and challenged and and given some tools. Um, That's that's our our time for today in Episode 2, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Love you all.